Oh! Oh! Hey! Hey, what's going on guys? So, a very exciting day as this massive and heavy box just landed. This is the Takeda Shingen, not kit, but this is just a, what is essentially kind of my first metal build, except that it's not a metal build exactly because it's not a Gundam and it's not made by Bandai Tamashi. But this beautiful samurai themed mecha is made by Mosho Toys and it's the first one I believe that they made, but I know they're working on future ones. now. Right off the bat, I just want to say if you guys are interested in where you can get this, uh, I know that at the moment pre-orders are already sold out uh, with us at USA Gundam Store. Hopefully we can get some more. I don't know if that's going to be possible or if that's going to happen, but of course we'll let you guys know if we do. I do know that Mosho is working on future projects, so if you can get your hands on this one, uh, look out for their next future projects coming out. But with this being a very large and heavy, I know it's got like a metal frame in there as well too. It's all pre-painted, so if you guys are unfamiliar with metal build stuff, you know, it's basically going to be kind of similar to that. Obviously something like this is going to be pretty expensive, but what you're paying for is something that's supposed to be very high quality. Now I'll admit I haven't been following too much information about the release of this. This is just a sample that was sent to me, so thank you very much for that. Very cool, very happy to review this and share the information with you guys. But I'm kind of going into a little bit blind to be honest, which is probably for the best because that way I don't have any expectations about this. I'm expecting it to be of a certain high quality. I can just go into this blind and give you guys a very honest review. What do I think about it? Uh, I think the design design is very cool. It's not necessarily my personal taste. I don't normally go for like this kind of design exactly, but I do think that it does look very well made, at least just based on a little bit that I've seen about it. So anyway, guys, let's just get into it and then see what it's like. I'll let you guys know my thoughts. So let's check out the box first. It's very heavy. Here you go. So on the front here, just a very cool image of the mecha itself with a bridge there in the background, which I believe that's maybe in Hong Kong. But anyway, got a bunch of logos all around. Got the Mosho Toys logo up here, a Noble Class, which I don't really know what that means. I'm guessing that's gonna be like for this series of metal build kind of figures that they're putting out, they're gonna be Noble Class is gonna be the thing for them. But then also down here, you have this part which says progenitor, progenitor effect. I don't really know what that's about. If that's related to some particular series or something, I don't know, but Noble Class painted model with metal frame. There you go, Takeda Shingen. Over here on this side of the box, you got another image of the Shingen there. I'm just gonna call it Shingen for short. I think that'll probably be for the best. On the top here, you've got that there in Chinese. And on the bottom of the box, you've got it there in English too. Yeah, yeah. And then rotating it around here to the back side of the box, we just got basically kind of the same thing, just a different pose here. Now it's kind of like in the woods and doing this uh, kneel down action pose, drawing its sword there. So yeah, very kind of, obviously it's gonna give some astray vibes just because the design, number one, it's red. Uh, number two, the legs kind of are sort of a similar shape to the astray and then just kind of the whole samurai feel with the different sword weapons, things like that. So let's drop it down and without any further ado, let's pull this out and see what we got in here. So we got this type of packaging, very nice. Right off the bat, this whoa, is uh, bigger than I was expecting, and I can't pick it all up at once, but we got this, which I'm going to assume is probably like our instructions and stuff, so we'll check that out in just a second. But yeah, I can tell you right away, this is larger than what I was expecting, definitely. So, all right, before we get into all that, let's check out this. Once again, we have the progenitor effect. Again, I don't really know what that is, sorry. It's basically in here just uh, looks like uh, the instructions and features about this. Is it all in Chinese though? That's unfortunate. I mean, understandable. But yeah, okay, it looks like it's all gonna be in Chinese. So step one here is just contents. There you can see what all is included with that. You got the base and a bunch of different weapons and stuff. And then some of the features of this, I guess. So take off the helmet, you can put in LEDs for, or put in the batteries for the LED in the head. And then I guess pushing the little head camera will be our button for turning on the LED. You can remove this part here on the back of the head. I'm not really sure what that's for. Ah, that's for replacing that. So you can replace it with this cool hair effect part out the back. Very nice. You can also extend the neck up to be a, bit, a little bit more sort of like human kind of proportions there, having like a longer neck, I guess, sort of thing, if you just prefer, prefer the proportions of that. Um, moving the shoulder armor there, it looks like, moving the shoulder joint itself. Uh, you got these panels here on the back of the 
back, which open out like that for, I guess, just, it's showing some of the articulation points, so it just kind of takes the guesswork out of it. When you're moving stuff around, especially on something expensive like this, you don't really want to be guessing about which parts are supposed to move and which parts are not, so I guess it's kind of nice that they let you know exactly how and where certain parts are supposed to move. That way you're not moving something the wrong way accidentally or something like that and kind of end up breaking it. That would be unfortunate. You can see quite a lot of movement there in the foot. That's pretty extreme. How to mount those with these mount pieces onto the side skirts. All very good. Opening up the back. You can mount the sword onto the back there as well too. You have this larger weapon, which is a sort of, what is that kind of weapon called? Sort of like a lance or glade or pole arm type of thing. I don't know exactly. Weapons are not my forte, but anyway, there you go. You've got some more stuff there. It looks like you can take the sword blades out of the sword, put on this connector piece, and you can attach those onto the ends of there as well too. So lots of options that you can do with the weapons. That'll be cool. We'll try all that out. There is the base. And then here is what looks to be, I guess, uh, just like a short little background information. Again, it's all in Chinese. Would have been nice if this would be in... English as well too. I know, you know, it's made in China. Uh, probably most of the people buying this are going to be Chinese, but you know, for international audiences, it'd be nice to have this in English as well too. I don't know if they've maybe published this on somewhere online on a blog or something like that. Maybe someone's already translated this to English, but you've got just a short little manga background story here, it looks like. So yeah, cool if you can read Chinese, but. Uh, there you go. Now for the moment of truth. I gotta say, it's a bit nice to be able to get something where I can just open it up and review it straight away without having to build it first. Kind of refreshing. I do prefer to build though, I will say. Man, this thing feels very heavy. So you got some kind of uh, sponge packaging in here to protect it. You can already hear some loose pieces in there. It looks like his shoulder armor came apart a little bit. We'll put that back together. Some more foam pieces that are just set in here to protect that. Very nice. Let's have a look. All right, first impressions. Number one, I'm surprised that it's not more metallic. So we got the metallic gold on there. I was expecting the red to be more metallic and it's definitely not. It's just kind of like a satin. It's not super matte either. It's got a little bit of a shine to it. Kind of a satin finish on the red, which looks nice. It's just not exactly what I was expecting. Just based on the artwork. I don't know, for whatever reason, I was thinking it that was gonna be a little bit more metallic. Also not a ton of markings on there. You do have some pre-printed markings which are nice, but if it was me, I would probably go in and add even more markings on it. So you could just use any kind of decals. I would maybe spray uh, a little bit of gloss coat on this. I think it'd probably be fine without spraying gloss coat, but just to be safe, give it some gloss coats, add a few more decals here and there. But yeah, first impression is it does look nice, very heavy. I already got a few parts here falling off on me, so I'll put those back on and hopefully as we're going through the whole like actual articulation and review portion of this, that won't be a continuing problem. It's just fresh out the box, so I, mean, I can understand. Be a little bit of looseness here and there. But let me get everything else all pulled out of the box here. I can see it's just right here. I want to take a look at this. Here's the hair part, which does have a nice kind of gradient pre-painted on there. It looks pretty cool. So yeah, I'll get the rest of this all pulled out of the box and then we'll see how it looks. All right, let's just start off with a good proper look around this guy. And I gotta say, it is a very impressive looking figure. It's huge for one, and also it has a really cool design to it. There's certain design features around that I like or dislike more than others, but I gotta say, it is a very impressive looking thing. I mean, number one, it's bright red, so it's gonna stand out, obviously. Plus, it's just a huge, and the whole aesthetic of it is very unique and just very striking anyway. This is certainly gonna stand out in your collection. Also just because of how big it is too, it's quite large. I'll show you guys a comparison here in a little bit, but it's basically like a perfect grade in terms of its size. Now I don't know what the exact scale of this is if, or, because I don't know how big these mechas are in universe. And as far as I can see in the box and in the manual and everything, it doesn't give it any particular scale, but it is certainly impressive and has a lot of really interesting gimmicks and features as well too, as, lo as well as the weapons and all that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now let's start from the ground up and talk about the base here, which is quite large. It's 27 centimeters squared, so very big and it is very nice shiny silver because it's actually metal here and the black lines are just pre-painted onto there. So I wonder if you're moving this around too much, if that black, paint is going to be scratched away at some point. Hopefully not, but anyway, just something to look out for. Plastic on the bottom, but yeah, it's a metal plate here on the top, and that is because up underneath the feet, you'll notice it's got four magnets on there, so the magnets will actually stick down onto the base like that, so you can hear a nice, good, strong connection there. And let's see, it should be able to pick up the base by the model, which is awesome. And for scientific purposes, let me see how far I can lean 
the base before the model starts to fall off. Yeah, there you go. So anyway, that's very cool. At least you can know that even if your pose is not quite right, it should still stay on the base. Now you do also have this as well too for doing action poses. You can get this up into the air. Basically up inside there, you'll remove this cover piece here and that's where you can plug this onto your action base. Now the arm of this is also metal but the actual attachment piece at the end is plastic. So I'm still a little bit concerned about that with the like little tab piece that's actually plugging into the kit being plastic, that could be a problem. That said, it is pretty thick plastic, so I think it'll probably be fine. The only problem with this base now is that you can't actually change the angle of anything. You're just stuck at this one angle. That said, it does still look, well, I mean, it doesn't really look very, it doesn't look like much now, but <laughs> once we try out an actual action pose, it will be still cool to see this up in the air rather than just stuck down onto the base. And I should also mention just about this base piece itself. You have a ton of really nice detail on there, but obviously it's just all molded in black and no pre-painting here on this. So I would go ahead and paint in some of these details as well too, bring some of those out. Also, you have a bunch of magnets on the bottom side of this too, so that'll stick down very firmly onto the base plate there itself. So just to go through some of the rest of the accessories, we've got closed fists there on the kit. Now you do also have a set of open expressive hands like this, so not only are these very nicely painted and detailed, the pose is really nice. Also got some just kind of like open resting hands, or you could use these for like if it's reaching for the sword in the scabbard or something like that. So those are cool. And then a couple other different types of holding hands. So these would be like for holding on to the lance weapon or axe or whatever you want to call that. Then you also got your sword holding hand. So you can see how the hand is kind of molded in a way to fit the sword handle in there. And you do also have another option for those like this, which are at more of an angle. So you'd be holding at more of an angle than like just straight up. So you got those for both the left and the right, as with all these. And finally, these hands here for again, like for having your hand on the sword scabbard or something like that. Anyway, these also look very nice. So plenty of really nice hand options there. You have three different swords with this, this longer one, and then two of these smaller ones, which are gonna be the same. Now these are really nicely painted, detailed on there. They do have a seam line through the scabbard part. If you take these out, I was surprised to notice that the blade is in fact plastic and not metal, which is kind of odd considering that you have a metal frame. I would have thought they would have made these katana blades also in metal. Now, I don't know if there's maybe some legal reason for that, that then it maybe like qualifies as like a knife or something like that, just for legality reasons. I wouldn't expect it to be that sharp, but I don't know if that's maybe the reason behind it. That said, it's just like black plastic with this effect painted on there. And it looks nice enough. I just want to say that it would just feel a little bit more premium. It would feel more worthwhile if this was actually metal. Still looks great though. And again, nice detail. This part I also kind of wish there was maybe some painting going on with this to fill in some of the details or something on the handle. You got a little bit of like that green and gold there at the end, but those look nice and have a very satisfying click when you put the sword back into the scabbard there. And then you have this really nice display piece for this as well too. So you can rest your two swords on top of here, or I guess you can rest like one longer one and one shorter one. Or if you wanted to do one of these, those fit into there like that. Now taking a look at the long one, it's gonna be basically the same thing. You got some really nice pre-printing on the outside and that's the second time this happened. When I opened up the first time also, the sword handle and blade came disattached. But this one as well too, it's not metal, it's just painted onto there. The silver painting looks nice, but wish that was, that was metal. But what is metal, or at least partly metal, is our connection piece for holding the swords onto the side skirts there. So you have one piece of metal and then a couple pieces of plastic. So interesting on this piece as well too, this connection piece is a mix of metal and plastic parts. Once again, here's a look at that hair piece, which I'm very interested to see how that's going to look on the figure itself. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And there are two different options here, like the kind of pull arm and ax blade part here, I guess is just what I'm gonna go with for calling these. So again, very large here for this, larger than what I was expecting, like compared to the actual kit, I was expecting this to be probably about half the size or like the size of this inner red part, but it's actually much larger. Then we got two handle options for that, roughly about 16 and 25 centimeters respectively. So if you have like the longest one on there, the 25 centimeter one plus, the axe blade at the end, coming out to be over 28 centimeters then in length for that. So quite long and of course gonna be quite heavy with all this plastic here at the end and then the handle itself being metal. It's gonna need to have a really strong grip on this. And then as we saw, the other thing you can do with this is separate these parts here like that and take our long sword blade, stick it into there. And if we attach this to our long handle, it's gonna be a maximum length coming in at around 48 centimeters in length. So about almost half a meter long here for this thing. Very impressive. 
Oh yeah, one other cool thing that you can do with these weapons is actually switch out these side parts. So if you take off the spike from this one, take off one side of the axe, pop this onto here, of course we can make it like an axe like that, which is very cool. Now let's come back to the figure itself here and go through some more of its details and talk some about the articulation here as well too. So let's just try out that extending neck. Ah yes, there we go. So there is the neck extension. It looks pretty weird. I'm not really gonna mess with that, but there you go. You got the full neck in there if you wanted. I'm just gonna keep this down here kind of normal mecha style. Movement of the neck, I mean, it's on a double ball joint, so you can kind of move the head around kind of every which way that you might want. That looks pretty good. Really just seems like kind of a missed opportunity to not make this like lion's mouth here on the front open at all. I thought maybe you could like open up this bottom part and it would serve as either like a cockpit hatch kind of thing, or it'd be just like an open mouth here of the sort of lion detail there on the front. But unfortunately, not the case. As far as I can tell, nothing of that moves. But one thing that I do really like about the design of this is all these little bits of like gunmetal and silver bits you can see like poking out here and there in the design so those are really nicely done. I'm gonna skip the torso just for a second and go down here to this front skirt part which is like spring loaded. So you can see push it down and it pops back up into place. Also these little front skirt bits also very nicely articulated and some nice detail up underneath there as well too. But as far as I can tell the reason for that is for when you're doing a super extreme ab crunch which you can do very nicely with this then that just like pushes the front skirt part there down a little bit out of the way and then if you want to you want to straighten that back up it'll pop back up into place so that seems to be basically the entire reason for making that like so going around here onto the back these parts will extend out to the side basically basically allowing you to move the whole shoulder assembly kind of out to the side for bringing this arm further across the chest here. Otherwise the shoulder joint can also lift up and out like that which does look quite nice. The shoulder armor itself can move like the main armor piece and then this part up here at the top each section is individually articulated so you got a couple of points of articulation here between those and the decals on these look really quite nice so i mentioned about this seeming to be lacking in decals a little bit in some areas but here at least on these parts they look really really nice so all this armor can basically just kind of move around any which way you want so you can kind of move that anywhere and it should look very nice also on these little bits these flaps here on the front and back of the shoulder armor those can also move this side a little bit on the flap can also move there like that ultimately you can bring the arm up pretty high there and then i'm guessing after that the arm is going to work pretty normally just rotation there at the top double joint in here now the metal frame is very heavy and very tight so i'm just being careful as i'm moving stuff around but you got a nice full bend there at the elbow some more nice pre-printed decal there on the backs of the elbow and this bit which i'm not really sure what's going on with that that seems like it's like a removable part or something like that or it should be or this part of the armor is removable. Anyway, the armor looks really nice. And then the wrist itself has a ball joint at like the base of where the wrist joint connects into the forearm. And you also have a hinge here for you to just change the angle of that. And of course, rotation there as well too. So really nice organic wrist joint there. The side skirt just like up above is made up of three individual sections, but they're not individually articulated really as far as I can tell. But this whole section will move. So like the kind of frame piece that's connecting the side skirt, you can kind of move that entirely back out to the side. And that's basically, I guess, just for getting out of the way. If you need to do something where the leg is up really high, the side skirt won't be in the way of that. So you can kind of move that up and back out of the way there. I should also mention this real quick, going back to the torso, you can also bend that side to side here as well too. It's very nice. And then as for rotation, you've got some of that in there as well too, albeit very tight. So again, just be careful with it. Going on here, back to the back again. Again, just really nice detail all around here through the lower back and you get back to this back skirt section here. And not only are these individual articulated up underneath, you don't have separate parts. It is painted in this like kind of dark gunmetal, which looks better than just empty red plastic. But I wish there was a separate individual piece here to fill that in that space. So it's not just an empty space there, but at least it's painted. Those are nicely articulated and don't seem to want to pop off easily, which is good. Also, this entire section can just be moved all together like that. Just move that main center piece. You can also kind of splay these parts out a little bit, separating those. So that looks pretty cool there as well. Getting down here to the leg, it's again very reminiscent of the Astray Perfect Grade kits because I remember it having something sort of similar where you have the hip joint it kind of will swing to the front and then back against all metal parts up in there, so very heavy. You can swing that up to the front and you can bring the leg up. If we move that front skirt up and out of the way, you can see you can get the leg all the way up to there. 
Bending the knee, you got some really nice separation of these parts there. Check that out. The knee armor separates from the lower leg and then actually is made up of two separate parts that separate further, exposing some very nice chrome silver there in the detail as well too. More detail up inside there, very nice. Going down here to the ankle, this ankle armor is uh, just attached here at the front, but has a nice kind of free flowing movement to it. it. As we saw earlier, as soon as I took it out of the box, it came out, but I, it feels pretty secure in there now. I don't think it's gonna be coming apart again. Move that up and out of the way. You can point the feet down and bend the toe and bend this even further and bend it even further and further and further like that. So plenty of movement here in the feet. Alternatively, you can point that straight down as well too. Going back around here to the back of the leg. And again, especially this entire leg section is what's most reminiscent to me of the Astray. It's very similarly styled to the Astray Gundam, isn't it? Uh, and you can see just lots of really nice detail there at the back of the leg as well too. I'm sure there's probably a couple little bits and bobs of uh, articulation that I'm missing in here, but that's the majority of it. As you can tell, you guys, it is very nicely articulated. And more than that, it feels very solid. So when we popped it open and there was a couple of loose parts kind of falling off it had me a little bit worried but i gotta say after just going through moving everything around i gotta say it does feel very solid pretty confident that nothing's really going to be falling off on this and especially you know if you're just having some fun with this moving it around trying out some different poses and things like that you're probably not going to run into any issues at all which is great and just for a height comparison here, as promised, there it is next to your standard Perfect Grade RX-782. This would be the Unleashed RX-782 Perfect Grade Kit. As you can see, it's pretty big, definitely going to be much larger than any Master Grade Kit, but not quite a 160 scale Gundam size, but very big. Alright guys, as we're trying out some different poses, I just gotta tell you, I'm very impressed with this. So not only just on the base, but also elevated up on the stand, even though the stand seems, you know, very rudimentary, it's very basic. Uh, I mean, it really does the job, and this kit, or I keep wanting to say kit, of course, but this figure is really, really solid. There are a few little things here and there that you could complain about, about the finish of it. Uh, I mean, like a couple little seam lines, but honestly, really, there's not that much to complain about, about the surface. It doesn't have any, like, gate marks or anything like that from the factory. All the pre-painting seems very sharp, uh, very bright. All the pre-printed decals also seem very bright and clear as well too. The figure itself is super solid. The only weight issues that I've experienced with this so far at all, and it was quite minor too, was just uh, the wrist can be a little bit loose when you want to hold up the wrist like at an upward angle while holding one of the heavy weapons, you might find that the wrist is not quite strong enough to hold up one of the heavier axe weapons. But otherwise, that's it. I mean, the main body of it is super solid. And not only that, I'm not experiencing any other parts falling off or anything like that as well, too, as I've been moving it around and moving it around in different poses and things like that, as you guys can see there on the screen now. I'm not really experiencing anything, uh, but any problems with this. And honestly, the base as it is, is probably better than an articulated one, because when you have an articulated one, then you're adding, you know, more possible weak points to it. You know, the more different joints and things that you have, that's more places where it could get weaker or break over time. I mean, the simplicity of it is probably for the best, honestly. And the weapons are really cool in that you have lots of different options with them. You have the two swords, you could have them both mounted on one side, or you could have the one sword mounted on each side. You have the sword, the longer sword that you can mount onto the back, or you can take the blade from the long sword and attach it onto the pole arm, or you can have the axe weapons, or you can have two of them or one of them. Anyway, there's really cool combinations of things that you can do with the weapons. So I think what you get as far as like the accessories for this are really quite nice as well too. I do still wish the sword blade was actually metal. Now it doesn't really need to be for any particular reason. It would just kind of feel a little bit more premium for a figure that is pretty expensive. That said, overall, I feel the quality of this is very nice. There are certain areas where you could go in and maybe add like a little bit more detailing in like on some of like the elbow and knee joints in like the interior structures of those a little bit. Once they're exposed, you can see there is some detail there that, you know, it could be cool if you went in and detail painted that up even a little bit more. But honestly, I think just as it is, it looks great. If I were to go in and add anything to this, it would probably just be, like I said earlier, adding a few more decals here and there. Uh, so I think there's some areas that could benefit from a couple little decals, but other than that, yeah, very cool. Highly recommend it to you guys. I know it's expensive, so it's not going to be for everyone. And again, if you're like me and don't really normally prefer stuff like this that's pre-built, I just prefer to build stuff on my own. But I gotta say, I really do like this quite a lot. It's very cool. So check it out, guys, if you're interested. If you have any other further questions or comments about this, of course, do feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. There's a lot built into this and a lot that you can do with it. It's very possible that I may have missed something or just may have missed commenting about something, uh, maybe that you guys were wondering about this figure. So do feel free to ask and I'll try my best to answer any questions that you guys might have about this. But 
For now, guys, I'll just once again say thank you to USA Gundam Store for making it all possible. Hopefully, we can get some more of these. So if you already got your pre-order in, then congratulations. If not, then yeah, hopefully we can get some more for you guys. Uh, just watch out for the future releases from Mosho Toys. So I gotta say, if they're up to the same quality as this, and I would assume they'll probably be better, they'll probably be looking to make some improvements for the future ones. So a lot to look forward to though with the future releases. So definitely looking forward to those. Thank you guys so much for your support, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's greatly appreciated as well. And until next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.